Hi everybody, it's Brian here again, giving you a look at what I'm uh, and the next Game Pro magazine in my collection, and this is Game Pro issue number 59, and this is from June 1994, and I remember this cover with the race car in the front for virtual racing. Um, so here we go. You can see on the front you got virtual racing, Pro Strategy Guide, Mortal Kombat 2, the second part of it, I believe. NBA Jam, Hidden Characters and Power-Ups, Arcade Action 94, Daytona USA, Revolution X, Star Wars, Pro Reviews, Sylvester and Tweety, NBA Action 94, Super Metroid Review, that's a big one, Slam Masters, the wrestling game, I believe, there was a port for the Super Nintendo, and Wario Land. Um, previews, Final Fantasy VI, Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD, Aliens vs. Predator, and Death and Return of Superman. You can see you still have my address from back when I was a kid on here. So let's open this issue up and see what's inside. Okay, see this ad with a stupid, with a stinky foot on the Genesis controller there? A guy wrestling in an alligator. Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage for the Super Nintendo. Really good graphics. I remember the graphics more than of this game. I recently got it last year. Here's a table of contents, as usual. I'm not going to go over all of it, but you see it's uh, like the other ones. There's Metroid Returns, page 56, the Super Metroid Review. There's Wario Land, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Land 2, I believe. Add for a third-party arcade stick by Naki, and also a uh, control pad by them for the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Contest is continued. You got Swerps Pages, Role Players Realm, and in Role Players Realm this week we have Heimdall for Sega CD and Lord of the Rings Preview Volume One for the SNES and Wizardry Five for the SNES. Game Genie codes. And here's a letter from the editor. The format of the future, CD-ROM or cartridge. The surprise announcement from Nintendo and Silicon Graphics that Project Reality will be cartridge-based left many in the industry wondering what the future holds. Is Nintendo making a smart decision, or are Sega, Sony, CD, 3DO, Sega, 3DO, Sony, and others looking towards the real future of video games with much, the much-vaunted CD-ROM technology? So here, there's what Project Reality and 64 decided to go to cartridge at this point, and people were, and CDs were coming around. People were like, CDs are the future. Nintendo decided to stay with cartridges, and they're discussing the if this is a good move or not, and what the future will hold. Looking back on cartridges. Um, for the N64, the advantages were no load times. You could have um, big worlds without load times because CD-ROM technology early on was um, very slow in loading. Um, here's an ad for U.S. Gold Soccer. Virtual Racing for the Sega Genesis, which had uh, special chips in it. They called it SVP technology. It was a special chip, almost like the Super FX chip, in this game cartridge, and it looked different than other cartridges, if I remember correctly. Here's the Game Pro Readers area where people send in their letters. You gave Cybermorph and Trevor McFury for this Jaguar pretty low ratings. How did you decide the criteria for judging them since there are other 64 bit systems in? There are no other 64-bit systems and few other Jaguar games to com compare to them. I bet if you'd given a similar treatment to the first SNES games, they all would have been rated with 1s and 2s. First off, Cybermorph didn't get pretty low ratings. It got slightly above average numbers. True, Trevor McFur, McFur was, several, was severely criticized. We based our ratings on the expectations of what a 64-bit system could do, and to us, Cybermorph seemed to have fairly ordinary gameplay. So I was saying it didn't impress them, which is understandable. Here's some more cart queries. Here are the other Super N NES game. What? Where are the other Super FX games based? 
besides Star Fox for the SNES. The Super FX chip, chip is also expensive. It hasn't found its way into many games yet. Nintendo's Stunt Racer FX is due shortly, as is Electro Brain's Citadel. Still just a rumor is Star Fox 2, and the talk is it may be either a 24 or 32 megabit game, but Nintendo won't officially confirm it. Sega CD Mortal Kombat came out after, I think it came out a little, well, I don't think it came out on Mortal Monday, I'm not sure though. Can the Sega CD be can the Sega CD be used alone without attaching it to a Genesis? Nope. Your only Sega CD options are to connect it to a Genesis or pick up the portable Sega CDX, which enables you to play both Genesis and Sega CD games. Super Battleship for the Super Nintendo. Here's the more artwork on the envelopes. Pretty impressive. This cool one with a half Mega Man, half Dr. Wily face. Add for the 3DO. The cutting edge, here's the Jaguar making the Jaguar roar. Atari's Jagpeg compression for graphics puts a lot in a small cart. Alien vs. Predator's True Colors. The use of 16-bit color in a Alien vs. Predator let Rebellion put translucent graphics over the main images. Image. Hot at the arcades, the Acme show. I believe this was an arcade show for almost like CES for arcade manufacturers to show off the latest games, Daytona USA and Revolution X. Here's Tommy Tallarico right here. Um, if you're expecting experiencing a bunch of bleeps and blips, think again. Tommy Tallarico, Virgin Games Greatest Hits Volume 1. Uh, this is an album I guess he put out. Um, if you don't know who Tommy Tallarico is, he, he composed a lot of games. Um, he composed the his first game I believe was for Color of Dinosaur on the NES and he also did the Earthworm Jim soundtrack and he's one of the main uh, people behind Video Games Live, the vid live video game um, performance that performs with an orchestra um, around several venues across the United States he goes to. Um, very interesting. I think I went to it 2007 or so. It was very good. Jurassic Park for the arcade and Star Wars for the arcade. Uh, here's Shadow Run for the Genesis. I never played it for the Genesis. Played it for the Super Nintendo. Um, the one for the Super Nintendo is an RPG. I think the one for the Genesis is as well. I'm not 100 percent sure though. More Acme show, Acme uh, sh arcade games. Top Hunter, The Last Bounty Hunter. It looks like a full motion video game. Battle K Road, Lethal and Fortress 2. Here's an ad for the JVC XI, where Mona Lisa meets the kid. More Acme arcade machines. Echo Fighter, World Heroes 2, Jet, Bloodstorm, Best Bout Boxing, Blood Warrior, Bonk's Adventure. I didn't know that was an arcade game. Hmm. Here's an ad for Flintstones, uh, The Treasure of Sierra Madro Madroc for the SNES. Here's an interview with the men who make Street Fighter 2 at the Acme show.
this guy here um, planned the versions of Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. And before that, prior to that, he worked on Final Fight. Akira Nishitani is his name. Add for Jurassic Park on a 3DO. Tempest 2000 ad for the Jaguar. Virtual Racing for the Genesis. Uh, got really good reviews. And I believe it cost it cost a hundred dollars for this cartridge because it was had special chip in it um, to do these graphics on the Genesis, almost like Star Fox type graphics with polygons. Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. Sylvester and Tweety Cage Capers. For the Genesis. Another Incredible Hulk game for the Genesis. Aladdin for the Game Gear ad. Arrow the Acrobat 2 for the Genesis. Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel for the Genesis. Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD. Masters of Hidden Souls for the Sega CD. It's like a full motion video game. Revenge of the Ninja for the Sega CD. This game looks kind of cool. A uh, full motion video cartoon type. Uh, looks like a Dragon's Lair type game. Dragon's Lair arcade type game. I'm not sure. Cliffhanger for the Sega CD. And here we go, the ad for Super Metroid. It took six years to happen, and you know what? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Super Metroid for the SNES is a massively enhanced, expanded, expanded and souped-up remake-slash-sequel to Nintendo's 1988 maze side-scrolling, side-shooting masterpiece that captivated audiences on all corners of the galaxy. If you remember what Zelda 3 was to Zelda 1, then you'll know exactly what to expect from Super Metroid, and you get almost everything you expect to. So it was $50 on release. They gave it 4.0 for graphics, 4.0 for sound, 4.0 for control, and 5.0 for fun factor. When Samus tra trails the Metroid back to planet Zebus, it won't be a very happy reunion. And here they go, Super Metroid really delivers what Nintendo has always promised, deep, involving gameplay that will occupy you for dozens of hours. There's certainly more Metroid territory to be explored, like controller, controller motion, motion techniques or a wider variety of graphics. But heck, Nintendo isn't working on Project Reality for nothing. You better gra grab this one before a Metroid latches onto you. I just recently finished this game, just last month. Very good game. Here's Super NES uh, review for Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2. I had all the Super Nintendo Street Fighter games, except for this one. By this time, I was kind of a little tired out on Street Fighter, so I did not pick it up. The Peacekeepers for the Super Nintendo. Looks like a side-scrolling Final Fight type game. Uh, here's an ad for Lufia in the Fortress of Doom. An RPG for the Super Nintendo by Taito. Saturday Night Slam Masters, based on the arcade game Slam Masters, I believe. You could play as Mike Hagar from Final Fight. Wrestling arcade type game. Flintstones movie based game, I think. Based on the movie, I think. I'm not sure. 
The Jetsons for the Super Nintendo. Lunar Silver Star Story, uh, working designs game for Sega CD. Have yet to play this yet. I would like. To, I keep looking for the Super Sega CD version. I, um, it's hard to find though. Space Ace for the Super Nintendo. Super Solitaire. Championship Wrestling and Natsumi Championship Wrestling and Super Pinball. Here's another working design game. They for the Sega. I think CD? Yeah, Sega CD. Death and Return of Superman for the Super NES. Ad for Claymates. Here's an NBA Jam Guide. The Sports Pages. Jeopardy Sports Edition. More Marvel trading cards. An ad for them anyway. The Minds Behind Mortal Kombat 2. This is part two of that interview in the last issue I showed you. Shows how they motion captured. The Groin Groan. Some concept art. There's Ed Boon. World Players Rome. Heimdall for the Sega CD. W Wizardry 6 for the. I think this is the Super Nintendo. I didn't know Wizardry was on the Super Nintendo. Lord of the Rings Volume 1. Never got Volume 2. This is the preview for it. Overseas Prospects Final Fantasy 6 for the Super Famicom. I remember seeing this and reading this little write up forever and ever. Just all the time, not forever and ever, but all the time and being amazed by it. Uh, Final Fantasy 2 for the Super Nintendo is one of my favorites. Um, we would get this as Final Fantasy 3 later in 1994, um, early 90, 95, 94, around there. Um, amazing game. And just these screenshots were just amazing. There probably isn't an English teacher in the world who can explain why something called Final Fantasy is now in its sixth version. But then again, what do English teachers know? about the Figaro Castle, Emperor Gastel, and the rest of this classic RPG storylines. Unlike some titles that are just rehashed versions of the original hits, Square continues to add characters and features that constantly improve on its already great adventures. Final Fantasy VI has more characters and enemies than any two other Final Fantasy cards combined. Besides the regular continent of warriors, magicians, and assorted journeymen. There's a fierce ninja named Shadow, one of my favorites, a tough monk named Mash. Actually, that monk was, um, huh, monk. I don't remember a monk named Mash. A cute, deadly cat named Mog, whose family has been with us since Final Fantasy III, and a punk rocker, and a punk rock treasure hunter called Rock. That's actually, the treasure hunter is um, Locke, not Rock. I think MASH is Sabin. In true RPG fashion, there are scenarios and puzzles to test the mental of every challenger, from sea and air battles to wilderness trek and deep dark dungeons exploration. There are plenty of magic spells, battle scenes, and even some very unstyle un-FF style surprises. Would you believe opera? What more, it doesn't look like 6 will be the final Final Fantasy. No, it will not. Bare Knuckle 3, it was also known as Streets of Rage 3. Sonic Drift for the Game Gear. Super Air Zonk for the Turbo Duo. 
Mortal Kombat trading cards. Boy, Mortal Kombat was just everywhere. It was just so popular. You, back then, I just remember the hype and just everything was Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and that whole fighting game craze. Twisted for the 3DO. I love this game. I used to play it at a friend's house and I picked it up. It's just a good party game. You're, you're it's a game show. Lots of almost like um, no, it's not like Mario Party. But it's just fun. Lester the Unlikely, here's an ad for it. Anatomy of a Hero. No greasy kid stuff here. No greasy kid stuff here. The only part of Lester that's bulletproof is his glasses. Support for massive brain, his neck. Alien vs. Predator for the Jaguar preview. Star Trek The Next Generation. Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. The Game Boy is the Game Boy isn't done with the Mario series yet. And that's good news. Wario Land is faster, more challenging, and more fun than its handheld predecessors. SWAT Pro Tips. Rocco's Modern Life. I love this cartoon as a kid. Mega Man X, Mega Man X, the Hadouken trick. Throw fireballs like Ryu and Ken. This is the Fighter's Edge Strategy Guide for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Fatal Fury Special Strategy Guide. Natsumi Championship Wrestling Ad. 1994 Blockbuster World v World Video Game Championships. Vivid 3D Sound Enhancement System. You hook it up to your Nintendo or Sega systems and it enhances the sound. Super Link Multiplayer Adapter for the Super Nintendo. Super Game Boy. Available this month, actually, in June. This month when this magazine came out. For $60. The Game Mage. Space Ace for Sega CD. Reserve Super Street Fighter 2 now at Toys R Us.
Midway takes Project Reality to the arcades. Williams buys Trade West. Street Fighter 2 movie begins shooting. Now that Jean Claude Van Damme is set to star in the 30 million Street Dollar Street Fighter 2 flick, the script is being finalized and shooting is about to begin in Bangkok, Thailand. I really like the Street Fighter 2 movie. Here, I remember these contests. You fill out the um, crossword puzzle, send it in, you have a chance to win all this stuff. Here's a little write-up on the Sega Channel. Wonder what kids in those Sega Channel test markets are seeing. Here are some pictures that show you what you'll be able to sign up for soon for a, for a nominal cable fee, of course. Super Street Fighter 2 ad. We own the streets this summer. And that's it. Um, that was the look at Game Pro Magazine, issue number 59 from June 1994. I hope you enjoyed this look at it, and I will talk to you guys again next uh, for the next issue. Bye.